doing it. You got you supposed to be happy you sitting there with Kid L. Why you mad? The Kid L podcast. Um, I seen you at uh, Michigan Central, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys pulled yeah, up yeah, there, yeah, man. Yeah. That was awesome. It was like uh, uniting the city for the yeah, reopening. Yeah. Um, talk about that experience, man. Oh uh, man, it was dope, man. It was dope. Uh, it was it was historic, man. Like I felt like I was at some corporate shit, though. Corporate. I felt like it was yeah. It was like it was all over the place. The lineup was like it went from like Kirk Franklin to Eminem to like the Clark Sisters to Common. Like what? What you think you was there? Yeah, the Detroit Orchestra was there, which is fucking crazy. Yeah, that was dope. That was um, dope. It's your boy Kid L, man. If you're a gamer and a better like I am, then you're gonna love Gamer Saloon. Play your favorite video games for real cash prizes. You can play games like Madden, NBA 2K, and even College Football 25, which is launching this month. You can decide how much you want to play for, find an opponent, and fill in your pockets. You can use my special code, gamersaloon.com slash kidl, for up to 200% deposit bonus on your first deposit. Game on at Gamer Saloon. Everything was... Like, for me, it's like you guys really just tried to unite all different factors of what the culture is, music-wise and as far as just presence-wise, right? Did you have anything to do with the orchestration of it, or did you just pull up the support? No, I just pulled up the support. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. It was dope, though, too. Walk us through the day a little bit, bro, because a lot of people that couldn't be there, um, just walk us through the behind the scenes a little bit. Oh, uh, shit. You know, I came with Marshall, so it was... It wasn't really no behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> That's just behind the scenes. Oh, remember, man, right? a police escort. Shit, we had a fifth floor. Um, we just went through the day. They had peace in there. I ain't want that shit. So I went to the cafeteria, <laughs> got some food. Uh, like I said, man, it was just real corporate, man. A lot of like business type shit. I didn't feel like it was some hip hop shit. You know what I'm saying? A lot, of, a lot of mic checking and. Cause you know they had that shit on TV, so everything was a lot of rehearsals and shit. As far as like when you're there, what's like supposed to be the reasoning for why you guys are there? Like as far as what you guys felt like you were there for? Oh, I mean, I know he was there for some rap shit. You know what I'm saying? I just just know that like, you know, by the the lineup being so diverse. I mean, Diana Ross performed so. You know, you had old people, young people, you know what I'm saying? But it just didn't seem like people were like a fan of anybody. Everybody just came to have a good time. So Yeah. You also got an event coming up, HEG3 is dropping yeah. soon. Talk about the past events and talk about uh, what's coming new with this event that's about to happen. Uh, the past events, man, uh, of course, uh, he got a gun. This is this the third hour with me and Foul Mouth. Uh, the past events, man, it's just kind of like we – bringing hip-hop back to Detroit, you know what I'm saying? So, like, when I moved back from Atlanta like three years ago, that was, like, one of my my goals to do. So it's, like, our third year in a row. So the shit is dope, man. I, f- I fuck with it, man. It's a, it's a good vibe. And then again, like, all the dudes that's from my generation, you know what I'm saying, they get to come and have a good time and meet the young dudes, and we all just – just party on some hip hop shit. Yeah, no, I pulled up to one of them. I pulled up to the old Miami event, and it was crazy. How did you? How, what kind of vibe did you feel? Did you I feel felt like, like real hip hop heads were there, like why? people that really gave a fuck about hip hop from the MCing um, to the culture of it, and to actually just watching people rip on stage. Yeah, because like, everybody that came on stage was just fucking ripping. Right. Like, you guys had Nick Speed yeah, running yeah, the scenes, yeah, and I was just yeah. like, "What the fuck? I forgot this shit's so entertaining." Right, right. So you 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 forgot you was in Detroit then. I, I don't think old Miami's in Detroit. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is it's it? in Midtown, yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't feel like Detroit for some reason. So basically, so look, so you said you came in there and you caught a vibe. Yeah. It was this and that. So just imagine that being our whole life. Mm. But we stuck in this city that we this small of a percentage of. We used to get laughed at back in the day. Because uh, St. Andrews is next door to Legends. Mm-hmm. You know, Legends is, is legendary. So niggas used to ride by like, what the fuck is it? What's going on in there, man? You know, hoes used to ride by like, what the fuck y'all got in them backpacks? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They used to clown us, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but we had to take that shit, you know what I'm saying? So, so a lot of people didn't know that Detroit, you know, had a, had a hip hop scene. So that's what kind of got on first, the hip hop scene. That's where the, the Big Shines, the Eminem's, the Royces, 
that's where we all came from. What does it feel like to you to feel that way? Did you feel that way? Did you feel like people were looking at you guys in a certain way? <clears throat> yeah, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they looked at us. But, uh, I mean, I feel like everybody in Detroit that was hip-hop, like, had a special guidance around them. You know what I'm saying? It literally kept us out of trouble. Like, I know for me personally, like, my cousins and them, they would, like, purposely, like, keep me away from shit because they know that I was on some hip-hop shit. You know what I'm saying? So, like, on Friday night, they was going to Outkast, the After Hours and all that shit. I was going to the hip-hop shop, me and Marshall. You know, we was going to St. Andrews. We was going to the – with a rap shit at because – in Detroit, just a, it's a jungle. So just for these couple hours, I want to feel like I'm just around some hip hop shit. We knew nothing could happen to us in there, cause everybody had, everybody knew each other. It was love. Niggas was ciphering. Niggas was smoking. Niggas just imagine like a social club, but all y'all know each other. Yeah. And y'all all fuck with music, and y'all all come here every fucking Friday. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's that was our palace, and then. The radio station started fucking broadcasting there, Bushman. And then after that, it was a rap. Yeah. The gangster crowd came in. I said, fuck it. <laughs> Taking over this bitch. It took a minute Get though. Get your goofy ass up out of here. What? It took a minute though, right? Like Uh the- yeah, it took about a, it took about a year. It took about a year. About a year, a year or two. It started being more fights and shit, but uh but when you talk about the mainstream, though, it's like even though you guys weren't rapping on that level or like rap like on the street rap level, it's like you guys were the ones who went mainstream for real, and everybody yeah. else kind of stayed underground, like teeter tottered with the mainstream, yeah, but yeah. never went mainstream, mainstream. Yeah, yeah, we did go mainstream, which is yeah. crazy, and it's like you felt different, you felt kind of like oddball or outcastish. I mean, that's hence the name, like yeah. you know what I'm saying. So, but to be the one that breaks out, it says what? Like, what does it say? Like, what does it say about? standing out and having your own identity and not really following the crowd and all that. You know what I mean? Like, um, I think it said you can be you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It could, it could be you, but I ain't going to say it. it's, it's, it's definitely not easy though. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's so easy to, to conform. You know what I'm saying? Like it's so easy to just do what everybody else doing, especially when it's heavily influenced in your neighborhood, your, your niggas, your crew, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah, I mean the way I dress and shit like that, and yeah. when I go to the city, I just hear nonstop like yo 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 yo. You're representing the city. You gotta start doing this and doing this yeah, and doing this. And I sit, sometimes I'm sitting there and I'm kind of yeah. like, God damn. Yeah, but if you're from the lie. city and somebody's telling you what to do, that sounds crazy to me. Like if you're actually from Detroit yeah. and like somebody's telling you like, yo, you gotta like switch it up. You can't be around these dice throwers when yeah. you're doing that shit. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. My my music got darker when I moved back. Mm. You know what I'm saying. Like when I was in Atlanta, when I lived in Atlanta, I felt like I was free. Like I, I, I had dyed my hair like red and shit. You know what I'm saying? I was fucking with some trap shit. I was doing some singing shit. But then when I came back here, you know, I'm in the studio with my cousin. They don't want to hear that shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They ain't even gonna let a nigga try to. You know what I'm saying? They, they, you know, shit. Well, I would guarantee that your audience is countrywide versus it being honed in yeah, just yeah. Detroit. But when you, when you, when that's all you around, you get what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. they, they gonna mold you. Like that's the reason the, for the hip hop shop connections. Cause I know like my boy Five Mouth over here, mm-hmm. like he shit, breathe, fucking sleep hip hop. That's all he give a fuck about. He up three or four o'clock in the morning looking for samples making beats all day so i know any day of the fucking week all i gotta do is just call him and like what's up bro what you what you want and if he ain't got nothing super important which he really mostly don't you know what i'm saying i'm over there and we creating and doing some shit and we fucking with some shit so he never lost his his touch you get what i'm saying so mm. if you just you gotta seek out the music motherfuckers that's doing what you doing. You know what I'm saying? Cause we gonna keep each other alive. Yeah. If I if I fuck with my cousins and them, I'm a I'm gonna be on some I'm gonna be in some bullshit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I even said it in one of my layers. I think I said uh, I said uh, damn, what did I say uh, I said my cousin uh, uh. 
I said, I said, my cousin robbed you. All I can do is laugh about it. Shit, he probably robbed me, even if I ask about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. not like that, but like that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's that's the type of shit we come from. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, we had Undertaker come on. You're not, yeah, are you familiar with Undertaker? Yeah, that's my old rap partner. Yeah, <laughs> which is crazy. He was like, hey, he's probably going to say he doesn't even know me. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> so he came on and he started telling us, like, kind of cool stories. He said you guys were coming up together at one point, and then he felt like when he came to the hip-hop shop one day that basically he walked in, and then you said you were going to rip him apart when he got in, and then he got confused because he was like, I thought we are boys. Why would you rip me apart? Oh. And then his story is that a Roddy Piper did that. <laughs> his story was that like it was time for you to rap, but then you didn't rap, and so that Eminem oh took God. Eminem took the microphone, destroyed him. Then he started passing the mic to other rappers in the building, and they all destroyed him. And then when it was time for him to go come up, the DJ cut the microphone, and you guys didn't give him a chance to rap back. Basically, oh, that wow. was his story. Damn. I don't feel like he's not. He doesn't seem like a person to make up lies. It's all uh, when I was sitting oh, next wow. to him, I felt like he, he felt like the truth. Besides the mansion Damn, party. Damn, so you said I'm lying then. I'm not even saying anything yet. You haven't said anything yet. You haven't said anything yet. Man, listen. I think people, my, my mother told me this, like, it's a little bit of truth in what everybody say. I think people, when they get older, they kind of, because I notice, like, people have, even, like, they have different parts of the story. It might be a little true here. might be true here, but it just, I think, it's some truth of what he said. I think he got it mixed up a little bit. Um, my my vision of the story is basically he was my rap partner. As a matter of fact, a shout out to Roy's brother, Greg. He introduced me to him. He was my rap partner. He wanted to start a crew called the Big Draws Posse. <laughs> <laughs> Remember this dude? Like, well, how, how big is the Undertaker? Like six six or some shit. Huge. So, Huge. all right. So, we started a little crew. Um, Undertaker was known for like battle rapping. That's all he wanted to do was just go to niggas' hoods and just jump out battle. I get him that. He he was he was do with that. So, I took him to the hip hop shop. I took him to the hip hop shop. He was my boy. And um, he tried to battle proof. This is this is my regulation. He battled proof. He had a towel around his neck, and uh, proof said something about, "I killed your friend." That towel around your neck, nigga. You might as well throw it in. He said that the crowd went crazy. Undertaker lost the battle. After he lost the battle, I forgot what I said. But if anybody know the Undertaker, they know I'm telling the truth. Like Undertaker is very cocky. You know what I'm saying? That's my boy. I love you, but he, he he cocky. So I forgot what happened, but the nigga said, nigga, I'll battle you. I'm like, what? I'm your, I'm your rap partner, nigga. You know what I'm saying? He's like, nigga, I'll battle you. So I don't know if we battled or not. I forgot. You know what I'm saying? But so that was the end of that. So I say probably like five, five years later, my boy Cricket, shout out to Cricket. He was like, yo, it's this dude named The Undertaker, because his name was Silas back then. So he was like, it's this dude named The Undertaker. That's crazy, man. He going out, he out here ripping niggas' heads off. You know what I'm saying? So back in the day, we was on that. Like any any nigga that, you know, wanted to battle with us, that's what we did. So I was like, who the fuck is The Undertaker? So they they, they like hyping this nigga up, like, man, he's smoking niggas. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta meet this nigga. So they take us to meet him, and it's Silas. So I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, you the Undertaker, nigga? You, you know what I'm saying? But this this rivalry has been brewing with us for forever. So he was like, so so Cricket was like, man, we going to set up a battle with y'all. So they had flyers and shit all out and shit, you know what I'm saying, for this battle. Everybody in the whole hip-hop community was going to come to this battle and shit. So we get there. So I remember... The, it, it was called Club 212. It was right off 7 Mile. So it was like three blocks from Runyon Ave. Or that's where we all hang at. So I remember we walked to the club. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I remember we, we get to the battle. And uh, Undertaker went first. And uh, Undertaker super animated. You know what I'm saying? So I remember he just rapping. His, his eyes bubbling out of his head. He said some shit. I forgot what he was saying. But he was going off. So I'm like, damn. So uh, 
after he finished after he finished uh, his verse and shit, he had the crowd going crazy. So they gave the mic to me and shit. So I'm like, all right. I look, I was so high, I just started staring. I I lost my words. I I couldn't think of shit. I'm like, and M see me, and he snatched the mic out my hand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he started battling an Undertaker. You know what I'm saying? Of course, he smoked him. You know what I'm saying? But that's my regulation of what happened. But I just want to say, because I don't want no <laughs> shout out to the Undertaker. You know what I'm saying? You do your thing. I just seen you recently. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you. But yeah, that's he Undertaker was a headhunter. Like he was a like that nigga was wild. Like he was so wild, bro. This nigga was so wild, like, we was talking to these chicks one time, right? And uh he was like, you know, we we battle rap. This is my boy Bizarre, I'm Silas. And then the girls looked at each other, they was like, You think he can get with such and such and such? Some some dudes and they, he said, You think they can get with 31? And Silas was like, Who the fuck is 31? She was like, They they rap. They he's like, Where they at? He's like, They they let out on the street at the end of the block, right? So Silas was like, man, let's go over there, man. We're about to battle these niggas. I was like, what? So we get in the car, we pull up, they door open and shit. So we ran the door bell like ding dong. And they brother like, come in. So I guess this dude, shout out to my boy Spot, he had so many rappers coming in and out of his house that his brother was just used to it. So we run the door bell, we came in, his brother was like, You looking for Spot? He in the back room. <laughs> So we in this nigga house. He never seen us a day in his life. So we we go over this nigga house. And so we he in the room making the beat. And Undertaker said, You you spot. He was like, Yeah. He's like, man, you wanna battle? <laughs> hey man, how you get my house, man? <laughs> he was like, nigga, what's up? You wanna battle? And my man was like, uh, I don't battle, man, but we can trade verses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we wrapped a little cypher shit. So basically, my man Undertaker was on that. He wanted the battle, and then he ran in the proof. Mm. And then that was the, you know what I'm saying? But I give him his props. He, he was a he was a dope battle rapper. You know what I'm saying? But, so for you, yeah, at that time in your life, you were more close to proof than you were to like anybody else to be like, all right, if you're going to go at my boy, then I'm not going to take sides here, like that side here. Like, I'm going to go with proof, on the proof side. Yeah, no, uh, no, nah, nah, proof was the king of the hip hop shop. He was really that that dude in Eight Mile, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, at bro, if listen, if you come to the hip hop shop, bro, like niggas niggas gonna touch your chin. They they gonna see what you got, you know what I'm saying? So it's like these these like professional battle rappers. So it's like, you know, it's an open mic. It's from four to six every Saturday, and then it's like the professionals know, like we can always tell a new nigga because they be out there ciphering before the shit start. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, he do. You know what I'm saying? They be in the cypher trying to get it off and shit. So, but once that bell ring and they get the going at each other, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers, are gonna, they going to test your chin. Who was like the first person to set the hip hop shop off when it came to like cyphers and battles and stuff? Um, Who should set it off? Yeah. Um, Shit, you had like Fuzz Scooter was, was one of them dudes. Swift was one of them dudes. Uh, Beretta, shout out to Beretta. He was, he was like a legend up in there. And then DJ House Shoes and DJ Head was the spinners and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, they did something big, man. I remember the police used to ride past and see 50 niggas outside and be like, what the fuck? Uh, you know what I'm saying? And start pulling their cars up. But then once they start seeing it, it was a, it was a, a, bat, a rap battle and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy that you guys were able to keep the peace even though you're taking it to a level of disrespect when it comes to, like, lyricism and shit like that, right? No, we weren't battling like that back then. You know what I'm saying? See, we 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 kind of kind of easier, like we we just battle with nigga one round, so you know what I'm saying. So we used to have the battles. They put everybody name in the hit, you know, and then they they pick your name. You got to battle with each other, even if y'all homeboys, y'all got to battle with each other. Yeah. So it was freestyle off the top. Now motherfuckers get to write four rounds, <laughs> get get a month to prepare and shit. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like a boxing match, right? Yeah. You get all the time in the world. That's how yeah. people feel about like the Drake and Kendrick beef. It's almost like to them, it's like how much is it feels like prepared. It feels like it's being executed in like a playbook kind of way. Yeah, it doesn't feel like the same as like a '90s rap battle or 2000s. Shit, nah, a motherfucker, this you on wax. It's gonna be prepared. Yeah, you pay attention to. Are you paying attention to, it or are you more like that's just entertainment? Like for battle rap. 
No, like I'm oh. talking about like the rap beefs that are happening, like Kendrick and fucking Drake. Hell yeah, I'm an MC. That's my job. It's my job to pay attention. <laughs> what do you think it's like as far as direction and everything? Do you feel like as far as entertainment value and as far as like how they're responding to each other, do you appreciate it at all? Or like, oh yeah, like, I loved it, man. I was I loved every fucking moment of it. It was it was it was great. I think Kendrick was a little bit overwhelming. He was dropping them bitches. He was dropping missiles. <laughs> Some motherfuckers is coming like, God damn, God damn, God damn. I ain't gonna lie, when I heard Drake Family Matters, I thought it was I thought it was over. <laughs> I ain't think Kendra had nothing enough in him, but God damn. Yeah. Freaky ass nigga, 69 God. It is entertaining, but it's also very dissecty. Like you really gotta pay attention to it. Yeah. It's not kinda like a Tupac hit him up against Biggie where you just clearly know what the fuck is happening exactly. Yeah. You got to watch that time too, didn't you? Like you got to experience Tupac and Biggie's beef. Like, no, I ain't get to experience that. I'm saying, well, like, as I far got, as like watching it and at the time that it yeah, was actually yeah, happening. Yeah, I watched it, but we didn't finish some shit ourselves though. No, yeah. like the fifty, all we was in all the fifty shit. Is that is that like a phone call type of situation when you guys are handling that stuff, or is it just like we know what's going on wherever you are, we're gonna be there for you when it comes to like being there for fifty? I mean, that's that go unsaid. Like, you oh, know, okay, yeah. we we lead, we come together, we lead together. Yeah. I mean, everybody don't play like that, but shit, we don't play like that. Shit, we we even, if we get on a flight, if I get on a flight and there's 10 of us, when we get off this plane, we all better, you all better be sitting right there waiting for everybody to get off the plane. Damn. Come on, man, you know how this shit go. <laughs> yeah, I do. But it's different when, you know, usually like when you think of that shit, you kind of think of goons handling situations where it's like, we're making sure you're protected. But when it's like mainstream artists that are protectors as well, that's when it's like, what the fuck? Like not only are you a mainstream artist that's like like dominating billboards and all yeah. that shit, but now you're also like here to actually defend and be like, now we're at the yeah. front lines with this shit too. Yeah, you know. Yeah, man, this shit, this a wild jungle out here, man. Anything can happen, man. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. That experience was crazy watching that. I still to this day when you watch the Biggie and Tupac beef, it's fucking crazy to see it. Yeah. I seen a video today They posted uh, Tupac acting In Saturday Night Live And Biggie acting And he was on Martin I think Yeah And it was just Fucking crazy to watch it It's yeah, like I seen, I seen Biggie Martin shit You seen Biggie on yeah, Martin Yeah It's I've never felt Like somebody's Larger than life More than I've seen that In my life For some reason When I seen that clip Because you've never Seen him outside Of like any type Of rap shit for real And then when you right. seen him On camera It was like a crazy Experience right. Did you ever see Anybody like that In the 90s Where it's like the amount of stardom that they got made it like surreal to see them in person. Where it's like, what the fuck's even happening right now? Um, I say the only person I ever seen that was like shocking probably was like probably like Rihanna. You saw Rihanna? Yeah. Damn, you said yeah. Rihanna? God damn. My bad. I'm hot, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm on a Rip Simpson oil, man. Y'all gotta excuse me, man. I gotta highlight that clip and replay it 16 <laughs> times in a row. <laughs> What was it Probably like? Rihanna and Jay Z, yeah. How was that like? Well, she was at a show we was doing, and I mean, I wasn't. It wasn't about seeing her. It's like she came towards me. She had like ten bodyguards. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so like I was like singled off in a little area by my kind of like tucked off. So she came to me and was like, "Hi, my name is Rihanna." And I'm like, I, mean, "I know who the fuck you is." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. Just shout out to her to just come out of her way to say what's up. That confidently you responded to her? Huh? What she smell like? Uh, I don't know. She's right. <laughs> she was so many. I ain't get that close, but oh, because I, yeah. handshake, not a hug. Yeah. <laughs> they had Ray J talking about a sex tape with Kim Kardashian. He's like, all I could remember was the smell, bro. Damn. I'm like, God damn. Yeah, Kim ass. Yeah. Shit. I would definitely have to. I would say, like, if it's my top three would be Abby Cash, though, Kim K. Man, man, you still on that cash, though. Hell shit, yeah. Huh? And um, that one girl from... Um, Tracy T gonna beat no your doubt. ass. What's, her, what's the girl that sings from No Doubt? Give you, Tracy T gonna beat the fuck out of you. Tracy man. T? Yeah. I always have nightmares about that shit. It's, like, gonna, it's gonna be all rib shots, too. What would you do if you had, like, a, a female, like, <laughs> counterpart? Like, your, your girlfriend's famous as fuck. She's hot as fuck. And the whole world wants to bang her. Like, how do you, like, maintain that shit? Like, I, like can't be insecure obviously but you gotta set boundaries at some point man i ain't you know, my, my mind don't even go that way bro i ain't yeah. never dated no celebrity <laughs> never did it nothing even near it um the closest i came to a fucking celebrity 
Um, I used to. No, nah, man, I ain't want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what, man? No, I used to talk to. Um, I was cool with, um, like Shana from DTP. She was cool, but I I never dated her. But yeah, you guys talked. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, Countess Vine. What's the name of that show she was on? The Parkers, yeah. The oh, Parkers, damn. yeah. Shit, that's movies for sure. But they like Megan Gooden or something. That's what I forgot one. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> I don't think anybody's getting the chance to really fuck Megan Good. You'd have to. We don't give a fuck, man. Oh, I got something. White, black, I handicapped. About this, yeah, I want to show you something, man. It's the first time I ever wanted to do this on the podcast. I was like, might as well be you the first time, man. I got some photos. Oh, you butt shit. naked, man. Man, you better subscribe. I had to not send this in. <laughs> I hit him up. I was like, yo, do you got anything crazy you can send butt naked photos? Uh, no, no, but seriously, me, though, I got some, I got some, I got some cool <laughs> photos. Just the uh, some kind of picture time where we can look at some photos and you can tell us about the times. Okay. We'll start off with this one. You could look at it first and then show it to the camera. What the fuck, man? I'm the biggest fuck on here. <laughs> <laughs> this was big ass. Yeah, yeah. Show it to the camera real quick. What the camera? Uh, that one, the one all the way to the end. Uh. That's 50 in Bazaar, man. Do you remember that day? Yeah. What was that day all about? Uh, He, he came to town, I think, for uh, FM Vodka. Oh, yeah. He hit us up, told him to meet him at this uh, liquor store. Went and kicked it with him for a minute. That was the game plan, just to meet at the liquor store? Well, that's that's where he was at for the autograph. So oh, yeah. Then we just kicked it from there. That's dope. Yeah. Shout out to Fifth. <laughs> My cancer boy, he coming up. This Birthday one, it looks up. like you're covering your nipples up, which is nuts, man. Damn. <laughs> Wait, I, hey, bro, that's why you're a legend right there. That's some shit I would do <laughs> if people were actually watching me enough. So what you want me to say about this? What? What What do you mean what do I want to say about that? There is not another artist <laughs> in the world that does anything like that ever. There is not a person in the world. Uh, <laughs> this code is from a thrift store. I know that. Did they tell you to hold your nipples, or was that your plan? Where am I holding my nipples at? Aren't you not holding your nipples? Hell no. Oh, my That's bad. One, one. My bad, my fault. That's all he has to do. Yeah, it's a thrift store, motherfucking jacket, shower cap. I don't know. What the fuck? My pants <laughs> unzipped. I don't know. What the fuck? <laughs> going on? That nigga, like, he hiding a bitch. But Ugh. the fit is crazy, bro. Like, what the fuck is this, bro? And the, and the mustache. I got, it from, I got it from a thrift store. I don't know what the fuck it is. And that bitch tight as fuck. How confident? That's why I was stretching like that, so you can see how tight it was. In life, you have to be so confident <laughs> to rock that mustache like that with, the, with oh, this Oh, man. Ron Germany on that bitch. That's, yeah, straight up. All right. Don't look at that. <laughs> that was wow. You got the next one? Uh, damn. I don't know what the fuck we doing right here. Was, damn, I'm big as hell on here, too. Which one is that? God damn, I got I'm big the shower head. cap on with the purple curtains. Yeah, you don't like, you don't remember the show or anything? Probably just another it's, show. It looked like he doing a part where he say bizarre. It's one of our little fucking routines. Well, I think we about to go in purple pills or some shit. Oh, no, I think I think I'm, we about to do my band, and he be like, I probably like I'm the lead singer of the fucking band. Oh, okay, I think that's about to happen, but I'm looking like man. Hurry the fuck up. <laughs> and this ain't my normal shower cap, so I'm on some bullshit. It's like a plastic one. That shirt longer than a bitch. Like you have a rush shower cap where it's like you don't have time and you just got to leave the house? Yeah. Like, you know, I, like I, we had a stylist that like custom made a shower cap for every jersey I had, but this don't look like no like some shit I got from Walmart. So yeah. I might have probably forgot it, forgot my shower cap. <laughs> shit, so I, it's do? definitely is a spare shower cap. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely damn. Okay, now you talking about the only oh, fan shit. Oh, there's the nipples one. Yeah, what's the this freaky ass nigga? This is sixty nine guy right here. Oh my god. This is sixty nine. Can I just this say it's utterly guy. disgusting? <laughs> god damn. This the freaky ass nigga. Uh. Okay, so did they tell you to hold your nipples, or did you? Man, I was doing. I was on some bizarre shit. I probably was on ecstasy or something. Did you man. like lick your fingers before you did it? Or? Hell no. All right, but I was making sure. All right, I see. I ain't tatted up like yet, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm still young as fuck because a lot of tattoos ain't there. I'm huge in the motherfucker eating porterhouses. My hair red. Oh yeah, I'm a fag. 
Yeah, that's wild, son. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> atrocious. No, man. What the fuck is this? Doesn't even look like you, bro. No. They must have photoshopped uh, it. No. Like, All right, let's I'm good it. with the camera, man. All right. I'm good with the camera. All right. Yeah. What's next? You can check it out my OnlyFans, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm a lonely man with an OnlyFans. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Damn. All right. This. Me, Royce, and M. I remember this picture. I'm trying to figure out why M ain't got a mustache on here. <laughs> I'm looking bummy in a bitch, so I, I look like I probably didn't even know they was going to take a picture. Uh, I, I look weak as hell. That's all I know about this picture. <laughs> 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 That's all I remember. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Damn. Got the old man hat on everything. All right, this the last one. Damn. Why does she got to be black and white? Was it really this old? It's old God time. damn. This the original, original D12. Like, we was like little ass kids. Damn. I think that it ain't black and white like that. That must be just a filter. It can't Sepia-ish, be. sepia a little bit. That shit like we was in the 40s or something. <laughs> <laughs> The 30s. It just depends who the fuck took the picture and what the fuck he took it with. Damn. That could have been the first cell phone ever to take a picture. Right. All right. So this picture is uh, B flat. He he was in Dirty Dozen. Uh, I see Denon in the bitch. IQ. Shout out to my boy IQ. He uh he an original member, but he ain't around no more. Dude right here is Dirty Rat. R.I.P. him. He was like the producer, a producer, beat maker. And uh, they go, my goofy ass. <laughs> I'm smiling like a motherfucker. And then we got proof in the back. And and we all look goofy. Cool. <laughs> These clothes fucked up, man. We was <laughs> fucked up in the 90s. Look at this shit. <laughs> everybody, one thing, though, everybody broke as hell. Niggas is starving. This is hot and ready. This is, this is 99 cent whoppers. Remember the 99 cent whoppers? Mm-hmm. Man, y'all, man. You don't know about them 99 cent whoppers, man. Bro, I was in the 90s too. I lived there. <laughs> you lived in the 90s? What, you was like one years old in the 90s, wasn't you? Nah, man. I appreciate that, though. Damn, man. You got some good picks, man. Get yeah. rid of this motherfucker, though. <laughs> this shit right here is. Get rid of that. It over. needs to be terminated from every source right. possible, son. This shit is crazy. God damn. That's like a new torture device they can use on their fucking right. interrogating terrorists right. and shit. <laughs> Stared this picture for three hours. But well, that's that's a, that's a good thing about being bizarre, man. I can get away with anything. You do whatever the fuck you I want. I can do whatever the fuck I want. You hit legendary status. That's what you get to do. You yeah. get to do whatever the fuck you want. Bro. But I, it get kind of annoying sometimes, though, man, because motherfuckers meet me and they get mad that I'm a regular motherfucker. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You know I like to go fishing and shit. Yeah, you hit me up one time. It was crazy. <laughs> you like, yo, what's some good fishing spots? I'm like, why the fuck would I know? That's the most racist question ever to ask oh, me. Oh, like, shit. Hey, what the fuck kind of shit is this? Oh, man. Man, you know, because you know where the private ponds at, man. You, you stay in the gated communities, man. That's crazy talk. That's, that's, where, that's where the fish at, man. Bro. Man, you ain't catch. What the fuck? I, can't, I ain't going to catch none of the rivers. It's 100 niggas at the river. Yeah, but it's That's still- why everybody lying getting caught up and shit. But assuming my fucking hobbies is crazy, Damn, I, grow my, my bad, nah, man. Man. I grew up fishing. I grew up listening to you, motherfucker. Like, think man. about that concept. I grew up listening to you. Yeah, you and you fucked up. You listen to us, man. <laughs> it was. It was. Our, our fan base is like it was, you know. Nothing else. Do you make a living just straight up off hip hop? Like just straight yeah. up? That's crazy. Doing engineering and selling beats. Yeah. yeah. And, and dropping albums. I stay dropping albums, man. Mm-hmm. Outside of you know, me and Bizarre drop one every year. Then we got EP in between. We dropped what four in twenty five months. God damn. But I've dropped like other full lengths, like I think like five, six, seven other albums. Now I know you guys might get a little upset, but my opinion of HGG one and he got the gun one and two, I think two was phenomenal. I liked one, but two was like I think you guys found it yeah. with that tape. I think you found it like a hundred percent. You guys knew what the direction was. You guys nailed it on every single uh, angle. The response was great. Do you guys feel like the response is what you expected, or do you feel like it didn't get as much exposure as you wanted it to get? I would say both. I think I always say both. Unless the shit's fucking, you know, we got a billion views, then then I can't say that. Uh, so no matter what, I would say that. Yeah, the shit, it it did well. You always want, no matter what, you want shit to do better. It did great though. Yeah. How do you guys feel about what's coming out with the new tape? Like, what's 
did you guys take a different approach to it or is it kind of just regurgitating and magnifying more no totally different approach that's why he named it art piece mm. so it's something totally different while it's still us yeah. still the same shit yeah totally different throughout the project okay talk about it kind of uh, talk about the design a little bit for us um we think uh <clears throat> beat style wise he picked way different beats outside of what we do when you when you heard uh he got a problem you're that's what we do you know what i'm saying you'll get that from us no matter what but we want we try to take you for a ride on a project that's got a sound this is the third time around we try to make sure we did that right except this time the roller coaster is different uh the music's very different, uh, open. Uh, I hate to give away too much sound-wise because it's, it's one of them things, you know what I'm saying? Because it's gonna feel good when you're listening to it because it's like, some of it I can't, I can't explain it, but as you it's listen- really an art piece. It's really an art piece, you'll understand it. When you're listening to it, you'll be like, all right, I get it, they were going for something different for this. I see, I see what it is. But on a level like darkness and dirtiness, does it get, does it hit the 10 mark or like, what does it compare to? No, not, not, in that, not in that matter. Um, some of the hard shit's hard as a motherfucker, but dark, this ain't, I wouldn't say this is quite dark. There's a couple joints. We can't really hide from the dark, bro. Like, mm. we naturally do that. You're going to get that no matter what. I think, I, I think the, if, to sum it up, probably be that, just put it this way, all the hip-hop heads would be proud of us. Oh, that's dope. From every era. Isn't it crazy how would the hip-hop community is that strong still, though? Like, yeah. we're talking about hip-hop, hip-hop. We're not talking about, like, the rap, mainstream rap scene. We're talking about just hip-hop. Yeah. They'll tear you Hip, up. Hip hop, bro, when I really say hip hop saved our life, I, I mean it in a way of like, okay, say like, all right, for it, it's just not to make a comparison, but I say a street rapper versus a hip hop rapper, right? Mm. Okay, so like, let's just say like a, a, a gangster rapper, right? So a, a gangster rapper, right, just say, all right, he rapping about shooting drugs shit he in the streets for real you know what i'm saying so like until he get signed or, or get the money he make he want to make he's still in the street you know what i'm saying like he's still doing street shit he still got ops he's still beefing he's still getting shot at he's just a rapper now you know what i'm saying so his only thing could be if he make it or not that's his only option but with hip-hop like it really was a way of life so what I mean by like that is like my neighborhood might be all gang members, but I'm a hip hop dude. So I ain't I'm not hanging with y'all. Like if you hip hop, you get that pass. You get what I'm saying? So it's like the hip hop dudes we we sought out each other. So I might be over his house just cause he he hip hop and he can, we can catch a vibe over here. So we made our own community from all different walks of neighborhoods and we all got hip hop in common. So like we wasn't in the streets. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. we we it, it's it's like a culture of 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 peace of peacefulness mm -hmm. and and you know what I'm saying? Let's just make it and let's eat this Roman noodles together and we're gonna struggle together, but we're gonna share this blunt together, we're gonna get high. So it was it wasn't a lot of violence in our community mm. you get what i'm saying whereas like it was rare to hear a hip-hop dude like if a hip-hop dude died it'd be because of like he got ran over by a car or some <laughs> shit or you know what i'm saying right. not like the gangster shit where it's like damn we, he was beefing with this crew and you know what i'm saying they got into it and we was beefing with we was beefing with a crew. We gonna have a, a battle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, okay, let's that's how me and Undertaker got. And, you know what I'm saying? We battled. That's that's what we did it back in the day. So like, like, and and if we were good, the OGs in our neighborhood gave us a pat. They protected us. Like, you know, my cousin would literally be like, "No, nah, man, drop drop him off at the hip hop shop." But they off are here doing some some other shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But they kept me away from that because they knew that I was a, a hip hop rapper. Does you know that when it comes to like a conscious level of thinking about that aspect where there's like street rap and there's hip hop and there's literally a hip hop culture? Yeah. Um, what's like the you just kinda laid out the discrepancy a little bit of what street rap is kind of representing or the street guys represent yeah, and yeah. their lifestyle. Yeah. 
was is it hip hop at all a more of a conscious facilitation of your mindset where it's like we're thinking of life with more ease and peacefulness and joyfulness? And yeah. does it get looked at as soft by the other guys, or how does it get looked at by the other guys when it comes to that? I think like the era that we came from, that's what it was all about. It was kind of like mainstream in the world. You know what I'm saying? Even though Detroit wasn't on that, but the rest of the world was. Cali, you know what I'm saying, and New York, and they they was kind of on that. So it was like, so yeah, it was a way of life. Like all that shit went together. Like the the balanced diet, even the vegan, being vegan, vegetarian, uh, meditation, all that goes with hip hop. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So we know in our space, and my line, oh my boy, oh he tell you about he he was a historian, but in St. Andrews, we knew if it was a fight. It was because an outsider came in that we don't know. That was probably just a regular guy came in drunk, but it wasn't gonna be no nothing between none of us. You know what I'm saying? We was all just cooling. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was a commi- It's like a community, bro. Like I, I, like that movie Eight Mile is really for real. Like you know what I'm saying? Like our shit was so cultured that like it's like say like St. Andrews, right? Like and uh, they gonna love when I say this, but say like it closed at. Two o'clock at one fifty, the hip hop dudes would start like asking for rides. Like if I needed a ride home, I'll start asking the homies. Like yo, what, yo, fine. Which way you going? Oh man, I'm going this way. I'm going that way. And somebody gonna give you a ride home. You know what I'm saying? Like and pick you up. Like come on, man. Who the fuck doing that now? Like in a rap community. You know what I'm saying? Giving each other rides to fucking open mics and shit. Like. That shit was really on some family orientated shit. Do you feel like so you don't feel like the hip hop shop could survive in today's era, like the way that it was in the nineties and early two thousands? Uh I think it ac- absolutely can survive. Mm. I, I, I think it can survive. Uh I think that the, the younger kids is is going back to lyricism, you know what I'm saying, and, and things. And it's so crazy because um doing this H H, you know, H G G three with file. Like the last show we did at old, old Miami, and and shout out to Old Miami, and we we uh, purposely chose that because it's like a historic hip hop spot too. You see what I'm saying? So we I I don't I won't I don't want to know where I only do one show a year in Detroit, and it gotta be at the Old Miami. You know what I'm saying? So when uh, we did our last show there last year, we was kind of shocked right for because it was like the audience was like. It was 21, 22 year olds out there. You know what I'm saying? And they fucked us up because we like, damn, we thinking it's gonna be the old heads and the audience, but it's a whole new fucking generation that uh that fuck with us that we didn't know. That's dope. So I guess I I guess I'm we doing something with this shit. Like people people was like energized by this, man. They they like they like love it. Like, man, you bring in hip they always think it's like, man, thanks for bringing hip hop back, man. Right. We we fuck with this man. You giving us, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's somewhere we can hang out at, something we can look forward to. Yeah. Dude. Oh, you know your mic on, right? You talk. Yeah. No. <laughs> he's such a hip hop head that he's like just soaking in the hip hop. <laughs> so soaking it up. You gotta think, man. Like he's way more hip hop than me. Like he 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 came from the beat battles. Like he he still makes beat on acid pros. So. Yeah. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like he's like That's digging Sony, in the right? crate, like you know what I'm saying? Oh, like bro, he didn't put me up on so much fucking hip hop I didn't know about, cause quote unquote, you know, I went mainstream. So now I'm back to the base, man. <laughs> but yeah, man, he didn't put me up on so much shit, man. Like Yeah, yeah man, I uh it's interesting to hear that the twenty one year olds and that age group was surrounded at the show. When I was when I came to your guys' show, I seen a mix, which I was surprised about too. Yeah. Yeah. I seen a mixture of ages and everything, and I was like, God damn! You got to think about it though. If guys like Tyler, the creator, exist, then the scene still exists for the type of music that's being made. Yeah, where it like touches those lines and kind of crosses certain boundaries that most mainstream isn't touching. But it's like if there's a crowd for it, there's people yeah. who fuck with that shit. You know what I mean? Let me let me ask you a question, right? Mm-hmm. Does it does it feel? How do you feel when you know you about to go someplace where it's about to be a good vibe? Probably non-violent, and you, and you probably know half the people there. It's only the types of things I pull up to. 
in these days. Well, you're a hip hop head, man. Thanks, well, man. Well, back you, when it was when you I was, chose, man. When I was heavy in the street <laughs> rap scene, and I used to like people used to tell me to pull up to this club and this club. I was like, bro, unless my friend, I, I already don't want to go to that bitch. If my yeah. friends are there, there's a 25 percent chance I'm gonna pull up now. Wow. But if it was a good environment, I'm always like, all right, let's do it. Like, yeah, you don't want to go somewhere and worry about worry about anything but getting back home. Like, yeah. Afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing else. Fucking valet stealing your car. What the fuck? Yeah. We went through all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Man. What do you think, like, um, as far as you guys' collaborating, continues, continuing the collaborating is, um, that you guys will expand as far as adding people? Do you feel like adding people is ever a thing for you guys, like collaborating on that level? What do you mean, like adding people? Like, you know, you guys are kind of like a duo when it comes to the producing and recording. Yeah, but yeah. you guys, have you ever thought about expanding or like even creating like a new group all over again or anything like that? Um, well, Fowl, he, 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 um, he does projects with other artists, mm. you know what I'm saying, in the, in the hip-hop community. Shout out to like um, Kane, shout out to Isaac Castor, you know what I'm saying? So he, he he's a maniac, man. Like he... He only does albums with artists. He he don't like to do like one song. He does whole complete projects. Legendary. So like you know, he on that vibe. But uh, yeah, man, we trying to we we, we ain't trying to we we bringing hip hop back. We know nah, fuck that. We brought hip hop back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it needs a lot of help. Goddamn, it needs a <laughs> lot of fucking. Not because it's not good, but because street rap is just terrorizing the scene right now. It's just. But you I, know what? I'm, I'm gonna keep it real though. Like. We were a small community back then, you know what I'm saying? It's just that, um, you know, some of the dudes from the small community became large, but it doesn't feel, I don't feel out of place when I'm, you know, in the hip hop underground. I don't, I don't feel like, I, feel, I don't feel mainstream. I feel like I'm at home. Like I know, I know this fucking world. Yeah. Have you got, are you guys, so now that you're finding a, a younger group that's like fucking with the music, are you guys also finding dem different demographics that are fucking with the music that you kind of didn't expect? Yeah, yeah, it's like the, um, I just like the younger crowd, period, like, uh, you know what I'm saying, like these these young kids are researchers, like they want the old shit, like from what they telling us, you know what I'm saying, I think they kind of obsessed with the 90s too, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> so that's what keep us. You know what I'm saying? And then file, we got like a certain style too. It's like a a, a real boom back dirty style. So, you know, I got the D twelve fans, you know what I'm saying? What I'm always had the Eminem fans, but then I got this new underground bizarre can rap, you know what I'm saying, fan. Yeah, I mean, as far as longevity is concerned, think about it. You've been in the game so fucking long to be able to maintain and build a new audience is like kinda crazy, bro. Yeah. Like what the yeah. fuck? Consistency, man. I, I I keep I'm gonna keep saying that word. Consistency, consistency, consistency. I know sometimes it may feel like nobody ain't listening. It may feel like it it's, it ain't going nowhere, man. But man, consistency, man. Like they, you guys should be happy that that you have a chance to swing. You know what I'm saying? We we didn't have that, like. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, like, you had to sign on a label and then, like, your video come out when it come out. Like, back in the day, like, say, like, if I dropped a video fucking in July, shit, my next one probably going to be October type shit, November. <laughs> you know, for real. Like, they worked the shit out of, like, you know, a video. Y'all motherfuckers can drop every week. Yep, and bad, you gotta think about this back then too. If you weren't signed, where were you gonna watch this video? Yeah. There wasn't YouTube, you know what I mean? So, oh, 2000. Right, either BT, <laughs> BT or MTV or Rap City, that's it. Yeah. For the underground scene, you guys had like Pirelli, uh, Pirelli and uh, they, they had Seven Mile to Bell Isle for like the underground scene at the time, but mm. I mean, that wasn't like the exposure you were getting off MTV. I remember my band playing like 50,000 times on MTV. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I like the song and shit, but God damn. <laughs> I'm like, the fuck? God damn. It was crazy, bro. Uh, that shit's so fucking funny. People are still people are still bringing up like uh, that you were in the back with that new shit that happened. Like, oh, like, shit, yeah. What's that new shit? That man, just... that's crazy, man. So now he's in the front. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, that's, that's a funny story. Uh, I was just going out into the, uh, the field uh, Marshall was going to meet Barry 
and I was just going down there to uh, to uh, just roll with him. So when he once he jumped on the field, you know him and Barry was talking. So I wasn't about to fucking just join in a conversation. So I just kind of stepped back a little bit. But you know, since I'm like so buff and been hitting the weights lately and shit, people might have suspected me to be security. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in the back looking all buff and shit. You know what I'm saying? So they thought I was security. So, and then when they took the picture, some kind of way I got photo bombed in the back, and you know, the internet tore my ass apart, man. They loved it though. I know. Lose yourself video. I was in the back. I was in the back, and it's literally like so perfect. It's almost <laughs> like it looked planned, but you just know it wasn't planned. That's why right. it was so fucking perfect. I'm looking goofy as hell with a dumbass <laughs> smile on my face. <laughs> that shit was fucking hilarious, man. You getting like you just you, the city treats you like royalty, bro. Man, that damn, that's love, man. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I put a lot of I put a lot of work in, man. I, I helped a lot of people out, man, and and you know I reach out to a lot of people that you didn't, you know, think I'll reach out to, like the little homie that was here earlier. Yeah, Jug like, Harden was like, no, yeah. he's been talking to me. I'm like, God damn. So it's like I didn't know the OGs <laughs> yeah. were really tapping in with the, yeah. the new crowd. I, like, I, I I tap in, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, gangster, hip hop, aren't you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I tap in, man. So yeah, I think that's probably why I got that, 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 that status because you know what I'm saying. Well, I mean, a lot of the newer artists are there's there's still a lot of people complaining about facilitation from the old school to the new school. They feel like all right, the artists that blew up in the '90s and early 2000s, like where are they now? Like they're not helping us. But it's like even when you guys went to the Central Station and you guys put on a show, yeah. it's like you're showing you're here. You know what I'm saying? When you're showing up to the Lions games, it's like showing you're here. I think they're they're asking like where is like they want more help though or they they want more facilitation because you guys have the power to like bring up artists and blow yeah. up artists. That's all he does though. Like he's not you know what I mean? I get it too. That sucks because there are cats like that. That's because people are scared to lose their positions for even even with people twenty five years apart and shit. You know what I mean? They just are. It's it's weird. It's a weird game. But bro, that's all he does. Like him talking about me hooking putting them up on boom bap guys it's because he stays on he's gonna talk to somebody who knows it the same way he put me up on all these other motherfuckers i knew nothing about and wouldn't know shit about he put i'm not even gonna say who but somebody was writing in my basement doing a song with him who was in their mid-20s and he put him up on somebody new and he put him in the rhyme so the dude who's mid-20s it would be normal to listen to him say it but he actually didn't know who it was until he told him you know what i'm saying so little shit like that like he's 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 up on game with all that shit, man. And there's a lot of gatekeepers. And that's, you know, that's life, bro. That's everything. It's mostly like the street rappers are t- kind of talking about. Like the street rap scene's kind of like, yo, you guys blew up. You guys are multimillionaires. Like, where are you guys at? And I think that's where they they get confused with it. But when I talk to you, and even when we just talked to Joe Carter earlier, yeah. it's like, what if you, what if they are in everybody's ears? We just don't know whose ears they're in. Like, just because they're not talking to us all the time. Doesn't yeah. Mean not, I mean, you're yeah. here with me right now. Yeah. You've been, yeah, you've been yeah. Cur- you came on my podcast three times. They're showing like. Yeah. You're here for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But why sure. do you feel like they feel like the emptiness where it's like, yo, where's where's Royce? Where's M? Where's Sean? Like, why do you think that they feel that way? Um, I I don't know, man. I I feel like um, you know, the these you know these guys that we're talking about are very high caliber <laughs> people in the world. Like you know, Big Sean, Royce, and M. Them some pretty big names. So it's like you know. I think, man. I think you know we we kind of older now, man. We didn't we didn't ran out, we didn't had our heyday, you know what I'm saying? We didn't did our thing, we didn't put all our homies on, we didn't put our our cousins on with security. Our everything is home homegrown with us, from security to managers to, you know what I'm saying? It's motherfuckers with D12 tattoos that ain't even rappers. So like, we kind of we kind of didn't did our thing, man. So it's like now, we just sitting back and watching y'all, you know, and just kind of being OGs and just making sure, you know, y'all know who we are and we still out here and showing our face. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, um, I think everybody comes secluded in a certain way, but, you know, I don't really, I think it's getting better now. You know what I'm saying? I think from <clears throat> what was going on, like, like, maybe two years ago to now is like, Look how much shit happened. Do you get what I'm saying? And I think that, uh, like, as OGs, we represent Detroit in our way. You see what I'm saying? And as long as everybody represented in their way, we all repping. 
You get what I'm saying? So if 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 Babyface, Ray and and, and V's and them, if they all represent the D, they they touring and and PZ and they and they, and they doing their thing, but shit, we at the motherfucking Lions game in Frisco throwing up the D, you know what I'm saying? Or, Around fucking seven million San Francisco fans, like that's you talking you you talking about some fucking shit. Yeah, it's a different caliber. Go to a fucking another stadium, <laughs> surrounded by a hundred thousand people, and be from Detroit and stand up tall with two feet on the ground, like we from the D, and we rep this shit, and we we gonna die about it. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. So that's how I feel. Like you know, everybody represent the D in their own their own way you know what i'm saying but mm. the age different age gap i think people just you know what i'm saying really just doing different shit but you know do you what I'm look, but do you look at see i kind of have like my own opinion which i mean i'm not gonna get too deep into a, about street rap and that i feel like rap is becoming more entrepreneurship than it is about the music right. more than ever right do you guys look at that as the ogs as the mainstream guys who've been through it all do you guys look at the entrepreneurship rappers, the street rappers, the guys who are know it's like a marketing and bag collecting thing. Do you guys look at that and respect that at the same way you would a hip hop artist that was dedicated as they were at the hip hop shop or something like that? Um, like real hip hop heads versus somebody that you know is just a street, is just an entrepreneur like trying to make a bag off of music, which they blatantly, uh, you know, explain in interviews. They'll say like, "I'm just rapping for the money," like that type of shit. I, I think, man, listen, I think that shit cap, man. I think that shit cap. I think. uh I think it's just something cool to say I'm rapping for the money. But, man, let me, let me tell you something, bro. All, all these street rappers, you know what I'm saying, if if I say this, if they if they couldn't rap, by the time they get in their career, they can rap. You get what I'm saying? Because it's repetition. They doing this shit over and over and over and over again. You know what I'm saying? So I've been in the studio with a lot of street rappers, and they can rap. The motherfuckers can rap because they, you know what I'm saying, listen to them. All the rappers from Detroit listen to what the fuck they saying. They got they punching. They got punch lines in there. They just on their time. They just on their on their own beat. You know what I'm saying? Which is Detroit style. But if you really listen, baby money punching. Peasy punching. You know what I mean when I say punching, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they they punching in there. So it's like, I don't think, you know what I'm saying, like Unless you're doing some motherfucking ABC one two three, like I don't think nobody from our city is playing. I don't. I don't hear nobody playing. Do you? <laughs> it's kind of different. It's like different ways of looking at it. Cause I'm behind the scenes on like the. It's just different ways of looking at it. Okay, we'll put it this way. Do you respect the oh, type of man. music that's being made at the same level as the hip hop that's being that was being made or yeah, what yeah. hip hop is? Yeah, I, I because do. Because when you don't see the collaborations, like okay, let's just say Babyface Ray is the baby big one of the biggest. He is one of the biggest rappers from Michigan. Baby Tron right. is one of the biggest rappers from Michigan. Yeah. So it's like the effort to collaborate with the most talented artists. But do you guys look at that and go like, all right, but that don't make sense with what we're doing though at the same time or is it like like what is that aspect if you are seeing people dominate like on that level what are you saying why they're why they not collaborating together yeah the collaborations and everything like that but versus the old and new because it's hip hop it's, if it, music's different I, I think it just got I think so you think it's music I think yeah I think it's music I think it gotta make sense like you know um, well, it's one thing I had to struggle with as an artist right mm. I'm just tell me like I, I say like I didn't send I didn't send rappers like collabs to get on I done sent them records you know what I'm saying and like they didn't sat on it for like three weeks and they'll just hit me back and be like yo I just ain't feeling I just ain't feeling the beat or I just ain't feeling the song you know what I'm saying but in my head I'm thinking like damn this song is perfect for them you know what I'm saying so I think that uh you know when it comes to the hip hop heads like I think they had a point you know when you get older, you just don't try to force shit. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So, like, like Roy said it the best. Like, that's the best thing. The quote I heard Roy say, he was like, fucking hell of a is T. Grizzly, Dr. Dre. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because hell of a, you know what the fuck he doing, and he know how to make them boys sound like that. You get what I'm saying? So, who knows what... T would have sounded on with our type of beats, you know what I'm saying, or Eminem beat. So, 
You see what I'm saying? So you got to look at it like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The so compatibility between yeah, the producer, the, ca- the compatibility. Yeah. And I had to figure that out. Like just because just because we homies and we boys and we respect respect each other, that don't mean that our music matches. Like look at Bodie James. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Bodie fuck with all the young niggas. You know what I'm saying? But he don't got songs with all the young niggas. Because Bodie Jane does a Pacific style and he has a Pacific brand and a, and a Pacific land. I, th- I think he, he if if you want to bridge the gap, he he's in the middle. He bridges the gap. That's the perfect example. Bodie James is 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 a street nigga, but he hip hop too, and we respect him in our world, and they respect him in the gangster world. That's crazy. Bodie James for fucking mayor. Okay. Let's, let's get Gretch out of here. Fire, you pretty no, much agree- sounds like you were kind of agreeing <laughs> on the same type of tip, right? Yeah. Like, I, this music is just different. You guys, your integrity is so strong to what sounds right and to break records that you're not going to do something that doesn't make sense. It just, when you, when you say how you respect it, really what it comes down to is like, you like what you like regardless. And I'm going to use this as a quick example. I love hip hop, but I've never really been into like the, um, like the extra chanty, like I do it for the hip hop. Like that's not me, bro. I wanted to watch somebody slaughter another man and that man die in front of you. Damn. I loved that. I wanted to hear the aggressive fucking destroy this, destroy this man. Yeah. I didn't want to microphone, microphone chords and hip hop. I didn't, I didn't like that shit, bro. Yeah, so, so yeah, like I, I don't know that, that end. I, I just wasn't into it. I, I, I wanted to hear somebody go fucking crazy rapping, but I respected it because that's like that's the that's what I'm in. It's hip. It's still hip hop. It's a different part of it. I was into like the the cats that were like like M and Chino XL. Like that was shit I listened to back. Let's say it's like 2000 dudes that were gonna just spill lines. I was obsessed with that shit. So like with that being said, like you, you like what you like anyways. You gotta respect a man's hustle. If not, you're just a hater. Like the, the younger crowd, if, cat, if a cat's 22 and he's on and he's doing his thing in his lane, mm-hmm. why at I'm 41 years old. Why at 41 am I gonna do that old the old hip hop guy shit and go, man? They ain't teaching these kids how to listen to hip hop, <laughs> bro. You can't do that because in 1996 I was 13 and I thought and to me 96 is the best year of hip hop because it's one of them three four years that's part of the golden era and that's my pick. But I didn't want to hear 1986 fucking the old 1985 style. I, I was yeah. like, I didn't want to hear that as a 13 year old kid. So like people got to, the, the older crowd's got to respect that. The same way the younger crowd's got to respect, like why aren't they putting us on? They don't, a lot of them guys can't, one, and two, they don't know how to. Like you're so different what they do. That's, yeah. that's what works with hip hop is it keeps having new genres. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not going to go back and listen to Little John and the East Side Boys. And it sound like what's going on now. So you feel me? It's yeah. it's a time and a place. So you gotta let people have their eras. You're right. You're absolutely right. It just wouldn't fucking work. You yeah. try to imagine the shit sometimes. Yeah. It's like it doesn't even make See, really you, sense. You gotta grow as an artist, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember listening to Portis Head for the first time, and System of a Down, and mm. you know what I'm saying Papa Roach. You know what I'm saying? We was fucking with that. But you gotta you gotta be open to all music, man, because it's. It's some older hip hop heads that's stuck in the nineties. Yeah, they're they're stuck there. They don't want to hear no Detroit shit. They can't even relate to it. They are stuck there, and I never wanted to be that guy. I always keep in contact with the young world. I, you know, what I'm saying I don't really hang around no hip hop dudes. So I'm I'm kind of I'm be in the streets. You can see me anywhere. So it's like I, you know, I fuck with that. But I just like. Music, man, and and I don't like being dumb. Founded about what the fuck going on in my in my in my city. I want to, cause I feel like, and and I use this analogy, and people on the internet they got mad at me when I said this, but I was like, yo, you don't think fucking LeBron James knows every fucking basketball player? Mm. LeBron James know motherfuckers that's in high school right now. He go to high school games, like, cause it's his job to know who the fuck. It's coming up, you know what I'm saying? Because he is a professional basketball player, and he take this shit serious. So how the fuck I'm gonna call my fresh a professional rapper, but I don't even know who the fuck coming up. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I, I don't like being a dumb dude in the room. Like, hey man, you heard of such and such and such? You heard of such and such and such? I like to be the one to put you up on it. And I'm an A&R now, so yeah. that kind of now I, you know, what I'm saying, it kind of forced me to even be up on it more. You guys are definitely the streets now. What's it been like so far being an A&R? 
Oh man, shit. It's it's great, man. It's great being mm-hmm. in Antarctica. I like it um because um it makes me, you know, look at the business different. Like I'm I'm this is the first time why I I'm going to the studio as not as a rapper but as a an A&R. So, you know, I'm in that bitch, I'm making phone calls, I'm setting the producers up, I'm setting up photo shoots and shit and video shoots. So it's 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 kind of like it's kind of like it's, it's funny, man. It's like a dream, man, cuz it's like, damn, this what I was putting motherfuckers through. I was I was this much of an asshole. Oh, you know what I'm saying? But it kind of I'm learning shit more too in the business like even if for me as an artist I can be like, "Oh shit, so damn, this is what we got to do." And, you know well, what I'm saying? When you, so like I kind of like that point that you just said though, like when you were younger and you might have had an Aaron R or producer talking to you is there like you know how an artist right now sometimes they don't take their moments as seriously they might be in a studio and not take the time as seriously like are you noticing that do you like resonate with like damn when i was younger like i wasn't like as strict but does it also hinder the music if there is more control from an anr or producer to like take things more seriously um i I feel like it's 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 cool with both but i say you just just for for me being an anr i say like this whole facade of uh of being independent as like fuck the game up so it's like as an anr i'm in a lot of the people's dms and like i ain't gonna even lie like 85 percent of the people that i hit up that got like a little buzz going they'd be like no i'm not interested you know what i'm saying before i even even can get into some numbers they say they're not interested they're not interested they're not interested and i'd be like damn you must got to figure it out. And then I watch it, and them same people that said they wasn't interested, six months later, they, hey, man, what's up, man? You still you still signing people? Excellent. You know what I'm saying? So I think that people got this shit in their head that they could just fucking go put a record out, shoot a video, throw that shit on DistroKid, and, and then they out of here. Yeah, I mean, you ever watch Shark Tank? Yeah. Yeah. It's like you ever see them when they turn down the deal sometimes, and you're yeah. like, "What the fuck are you thinking?" Mark <laughs> yeah. Cuban just offered yeah. you five hundred thousand yeah. dollars, five percent of your company, yeah. and you wanted two more percent. Like now, you might walk out and never figure yeah. it out because you yeah. thought you knew it all. Yeah, like like Max Hilly, the first dude I signed, I I told him, I said, "Listen, man, you know, I can't promise you anything, but I promise you this: when you finish fucking with me, you'll be more popping than you was, you'll be more organized than you was, and." You'll be more later than you was. It's gonna be on you. I'm gonna open the door now. You just gotta run through that bitch. Oh, yeah. So I noticed, like, like an artist like Max Hilly, like we took Max straight from the the the, the gutter. Dude had 15 Spotify <laughs> viewers, 15. Now he like 8,000. You know what I'm saying? Just in like three or four months. Dope. So I think that like when Max see with us, it's like. If any artist, like, it's, it looks better when you got a team behind you. You get what I'm saying? Like, y'all a team. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So like, just imagine if it was just one dude in here, like, hey, man, hold on, let me set up this shit, man. Let me get you. You know what I'm saying? But y'all come more with a professional look. So as an A&R, what I provide is, like, you, you know, of course we're giving out budgets. You know what I'm saying? I get to, you know what I'm saying, go after the people you want to work with. I can put you in a dope studio, but then that support too. You know what I'm saying? Like we we doing the video shoot. You you getting your hair cut. You got a stylist and video. You know what I'm saying? So it makes people feel like, damn, I'm ready about to do this shit because we already practicing how to do this shit. We just waiting for the for the shot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To have somebody care, man. Somebody to pick you up for the video shoots. Somebody to even take you out of this world like you know what i'm saying hey man you i know you you fucked up man you some shit you going through shit in your neighborhood come over here and stay in my house for a week or, or i'm gonna get you out of this neighborhood just just having a support team behind you is 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 dope you know what i'm saying yeah because a lot of these rappers they when they blow up they ain't even prepared right man bro you eighty five percent of these rappers don't even got lawyers. You you present them a deal, don't they? They don't they don't got no lawyers. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So they they not really prepared to do it. You know what I'm saying? So 
to me, I don't know if you can you can tell the difference between somebody that got a team yes. versus somebody that's just shooting a shot. They're winging it, right? Yeah. And what they don't know, they don't know. And it's like that comes to bite you in the ass. It's like you're better off learning from people who've already went through the experience. And you're like, again, like if, if I'm dealing with somebody and somebody's like, yo, Bizarre wants to be your, your NR. The reason that's the craziest opportunity of all time is, again, because you went from underground to mainstream, yeah. dabbled back between mainstream and underground. It's yeah. like you know both worlds exactly how the fuck it works. Like, yeah. And you have all the connections and networks for anything you need accessibility to. It's yeah. like, why would you not take that opportunity? You I know mean, it's, crazy? It's, it's grooming. Like, I'm, I, yeah. I, I say it's grooming because, like, I'm, 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 I'm like your, like your, like, you know what I'm saying? Your big brother. Mm. I'm going to be on your head. Like, I'm a, like, like Haley was saying earlier, like, I'm a, Tell you, yo, take that off of Instagram, man. That don't look right. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or you might be in the studio. I might be like, yo, man, you're making too many songs. They all sound the same. Or you're making too many gun- songs about guns. Or try this. Or let me, let me hit you with this producer. So, you you know, you're you getting groomed. A lot of these people, ain't they're not groomed. So you're getting groomed to who you want to be. You know who a perfect example of a groom artist from Detroit that's blowing up right now? Courtney Bell. Yeah. You can tell he's groomed. You see what I'm saying? He he coming out the Royce camp, and just on top of that, he got his own crew. You can see he's groomed. He's seasoned. Like, he, when I, when I see him out, he he only does purposeful. You know what I'm saying? He only do shows that matter. He ain't just going to do anything. Like, Very purposeful, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, when he's out, he got a team with him. He got his security with him. You know what I'm saying? He... He's moving. I mean, bro, a, to get your song played on a fucking Hollywood movie in Gran Turismo, like that, right. you had to have had right. a team behind you to establish. That's not exactly. going to happen for just anybody. Exactly. Bro. You see, Courtney Bell was. I, I just seen him on Instagram. He was out at the the Kendrick Lamar video shoot. Yeah. You see, what I'm saying Isn't that crazy. You, you got to have a team that that know what's going on and to keep you safe. You got to protect the prize, man. That's another thing, y'all young rappers got to do. Protect. The rapper, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Protect that. That's what the team come for. You know what I'm saying? Like the team is like, you know, me as an AR, like I'll tell Hilly, like his his boy Chuck, yo, Chuck, make sure he's here at eight o'clock. Yo, Chuck, make sure you just you know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta kinda police people, man, because this rap shit, man, these dudes are young and this shit is happening quick. Yeah. When you were coming up with you were like more of a policer or like a person being policed? I was being policed <laughs> because like when D12 got signed, like our older cousins and, and like brothers and shit was like, yo, fuck security. <laughs> We're rolling with y'all. You know what I'm saying? On tour. Yeah. So we, we, we got like raised by the OG. So we knew how to move and like always keep, keep the rapper in the middle, you know, stay, stay back, pull the car up first before we leave. Never tell nobody. You know what I'm saying? Just, just shit. I shouldn't even. Did they learn just little that secrets, shit or did they just like how they figure it out if they weren't? That wasn't their job to do that. Like initially. What do you mean? Like if your homeboys are basically protecting you, mm-hmm. how they know how to like do it? Like being being in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Being mm-hmm. street niggas. Like you know what I'm saying? Like just 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 having the 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 thought that you are the. The prize you you're feeding us. Mm. Can't go. You're yeah, bag. yeah, you're the bag. Can't go. Some of your friends gotta stay home. Yeah. Friends so they were tactical. Yeah. 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 You guys were tactical with it though, like yeah, very like, tactical. Damn. And 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 when when Marshall around, we ain't rappers no more. We 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 protect him. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just how our mind state, how we move. You know what I'm saying? It just you know some dudes they they just don't know, man. Like you know what I'm saying? Like they don't know. About, you know what I'm saying, rappers want to drive and, you know what I'm saying, they want to show off, they they, they want to go by themselves, they want to, like we was, like what I'm saying as far as A&R, we, we were, we were like groomed on that shit, you know what I'm saying, like a lot of motherfuckers don't even know, even like these rappers that like, they got, just say rappers that got kids and shit, yeah. like the rappers that got kids, like bro, you can literally, like if you owe child support, bro, just like, had a team caught out, caught out there and start making a payment plan. It could be a minimum of fifty dollars a month. Anything, you know what I'm saying, to show that you're trying. And like, if you show that you're trying and you do a history of that, you can get your like license reinstated. You know what I'm saying? 
and, and now you're like on a payment plan, so all the warrants and shit disappears. Oh, shit. But this is like rap school, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is shit you got to learn, like, you know, being on the road, like, you know what I'm saying? And what's interesting about you saying that you, like, you were being police, but you were also, like, protective of the bags, and you were protective of Eminem and Proof and everybody around you, but, like, you said you didn't come from kind of, like, the street background, so, like, did you, were you, like, did you just do it on the fly where it's like, oh, yo, I got to turn into this, like, fucking muscle figure out? And no, 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 no. I, I think I miscommunicated that. Mm. I'm from the streets, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just um, had a passion. for. It's, it's almost like just to look at it as, as like a basketball player. You know what I'm saying? Like he from the streets, he a basketball player, but everybody in his neighborhood wanted him to, to make it to the NBA so they, they ain't going to have him going to drive by with him. Uh, See what I'm saying? Yeah, right. That's the same thing they did with me. I was the rapper. I've been rapping since I was six years old. Right. You know what I'm saying? Battle rapping, you know what I'm saying? So all my, my my cousins and everybody around me was protective of me. So I you know what I'm saying, I'm I'm still grew up on Seven Mile, went to Henry Ford, Redford, still but as far as like getting deep into the shit is when I had somebody to say, No, man, you know. When did you guys start realizing, like, escalate, like, with D12, the escalation of security was, like, needed and to, like, start watching more, like, a hawk, like, what was happening around you? Do you remember, like, specifically going, like, okay, now we're actually, this is actually getting out of control? Oh, uh, shit. Probably shit. Purple pills. Once it dropped, yeah, you felt like yeah. you had to kind of stand and watch a little bit more, like, on a swivel? Yeah, man, you know. In the music business, like, man, you... You know, what? with us, we got to watch out for more, like, weirdos. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Motherfuckers who are just obsessed fans who might want to, you know what I'm saying? They still show up to shows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you mean they still no, show up? What do you mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't want to get too far into it. Uh, okay, I got you. Yeah, he, might yeah. <laughs> he might watch this interview. He might watch this interview and be like, oh, now I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> oh, we get the word. He came up here after we left and shit. They're like, rest in peace, kid L. Oh yeah, no. Damn. I, I mean, I'm on the you know obviously like I'm not Dude. near your level of fame or anything like that. But when I'm in, I have been experiencing that more where like people will stand behind you and just be staring at you. Yeah. And then they turn to be like, oh, I just want to talk to you after this is over with. And I'm just like, yeah. But, but why do you got to stare at me for the remainder of the time that we're here? Like, yeah. But like, you gotta you gotta read the vibes, man. Cause yeah. like, if you run into somebody that's crazy, bro, <laughs> just let them get it. Just let them get it off, man. Like, if you uh, see a motherfucker as out of his mind. Just let him get it off, man. I I remember when I had a dude coming to me in the airport and shit, and he was like, "Hey, what's up, man? You bizarre?" I said, "What's up?" He said, "Man, I want I rap, man. I want you to check my demo out, man." I said, "Okay." I said, "Uh, shit, take this." He said, "No, man, right now." <laughs> and, and he gave he gave me two fucking earpieces that was in his ear, Ugh. and was like, "Yo, check it out." And I'm like, oh, okay, that shit cool. I, I ain't put them all in. I'm like, oh, that shit cool, man. Yeah. I, I fucked with it. He was like, okay, man. You know what I'm saying? And I just basically be nice until, you know what I'm saying, I get away, man, because Ugh. some of our fan base motherfuckers is really crazy. No. And one I, word or one sentence could be the, the difference. Weird personal shit, too. Yeah. But they because they love you guys so much. Yeah. Like, they're so passionate about what the fuck you are to them. Yeah. And it's like, of course, like... Yeah, I had motherfuckers tell me, Bizarre, you saved my life, man. I was going <laughs> to kill myself and jump off of a bridge. And when I heard you talking about fucking kids... <laughs> <laughs> but like, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I was... You know what's crazy? Because, like, I had that moment when we did our first interview. And yeah. I was like, wait a minute, bro. I had, like, a kind of a spark moment, like, 50 minutes. And I was like, bro, what the fuck? I'm interviewing a motherfucker I used to watch my entire yeah. childhood. Wow. So it happened when we were talking the first time. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. And when I was watching you, when I, you were my favorite of the group always. Because I, wow. I resonated with you a lot. Just like, we don't give a fuck type vibes. Yeah, like, yeah. All right, whatever the fuck I it is. don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and um, what I remember seeing when I was watching you grow up was, like, these motherfuckers are crazy. And it, <laughs> it, it was like a type of crazy where you're never going to find this type of crazy anywhere else. Yeah. 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 It's like, who the... And yeah. then you never seen... And then I never seen it again. I was like, oh, shit. And then it just disappeared. Yeah. Like, Tyler, like I said, Tyler, the creator, was like the next yeah. person where I was like, this motherfucker is crazy for yeah. sure. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm about, like, in certain styles of hip-hop. Like, I want to hear hard, crazy, yeah. fucking wild, yeah. shit. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, but it's hard. It is hard to find. But, um... 
I just for I know fans and audience people are still curious about that kind of subject just a little bit more. But as you guys are starting to realize, you have to protect yourself more and be more careful. What have been like the wildest experiences of having to like actually pay attention to yourself as D12 was blowing up after p- p- pills drops and shit like that, where you guys are like, okay, do you remember any encounters that were just like so like beyond your expectations? Uh, we had to do uh, I mean Gordy show he. He wanted to get our attention bad, he, so he we, he went. Gordy wouldn't pay attention to him, so he uh, lit his head on fire in the audience. Fuck it, <laughs> welcome to rock and roll. Did he make it Lord out? Lord Vader, huh? Did he make it out? Uh, I, I, they had was tapping his head with the towels and shit. Oh they my god! Drag him up out. <laughs> and then it's like now that you guys got his atten- you got it your attention. Did you guys yeah. give him attention after that? It was like all right, now we're gonna talk I, to you. I, I don't know. No, I think I think he was out of there, man. <laughs> I think he was out of here. He might be out of here. <laughs> oh, for sure. Um, it was uh, it was fucking awesome having you guys back on this bitch. Man, um, it was awesome being back, man. Yeah, talk about the event one more time for us, and talk about the tape dropping. Um, For like uh, as far as the dates and everything and availability, July sixth, man. Mm-hmm. July sixth, release party. Yep, the album drops July third, though. Album drops a lot uh, on the third, and then you guys are having the event on the sixth. Yep, we have an event uh, on the sixth at the old Miami. Mm-hmm. Y'all better come out, man. This is my f- my only appearance I do in Detroit. This is for the underground. This is for the hip hop heads, man. This is for all y'all that love hip hop. Come fuck with it, and it's my birthday. Oh shit. So I'm in that bitch drinking uh, Wild Irish Rose. Fuck it. Ugh, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ on the bullshit. Bro. Woo.